The horror genre, perhaps more than any other genre of film, is constantly recreating itself. As soon as audiences tire of certain genre conventions or cultural values shift, the genre morphs into something new to reflect that. This tendency is known as a cycle. Cycles can be difficult to define, but at its most basic, a cycle, as defined by Ledger Grindon, is a series of genre films produced during a limited period of time, linked by a dominant trend in their use of the genre's conventions, presenting a variable, often fresh treatment of a genre's fundamental conflicts under the influence of a particular time, place, and circumstance. They run their course, then disappear as society's attention shifts. Here, I want to call attention to what could be a new industry cycle, one that began in approximately 2014 with Nightcrawler, continuing on to the present with Creep, The Gift, The Invitation, and 10 Cloverfield Lane. I'd like to call this cycle social horror. Though I'm categorizing them as social horror, these films don't all neatly fall under the horror banner. In fact, that's what drew me to link them together in the first place. They use horror conventions combined with the characteristics of a different secondary genre, making them difficult to define within existing contexts. As Amanda Klein says, film cycles are fascinating precisely because they resist neat categorizations and have the potential to disrupt or complicate the discrete categories frequently generated by genre studies. So what is social horror? The defining characteristic is that the anxiety and terror are derived from the social interactions between the characters. Can I ask you a question and you'll answer me honestly? Sure. When you saw that axe up front of the house, was there a small part of you that thought I might kill you with it? These films take place in an American context. So that's the culture I'm addressing when I mention the particular social scripts and codes that are generally used. And when those social scripts are transgressed, it creates tension and unease. I can see you're not interested. I'm sorry, Eden. It just sounds fucking crazy. Eden, what the fuck? Until you stop making a joke out of everything, you'll never learn a thing. That's why nobody cares what you think. Another key aspect of the cycle is that the main setting is the home, usually the suburban or rural home, typical locations for the American horror genre. But these films flip the typical home invasion or haunted house formula by featuring a host welcoming a guest into their home. The Invitation has a dinner party hosted by a couple with unclear motivations. Ten Cloverfield Lane's protagonist is trapped in a bunker built by a man who claims that he saved her life, but that a horrific event prevents them from leaving. The Gift features various social gatherings taking place at each of the characters' respective houses, and Creep involves a videographer being invited to an odd client's home to film him for a day. Nightcrawler is a bit of an exception here, but it's an exception in a couple of ways, and I'll come back to that later. There's an ever-present sense of anxiety attached to being a guest in someone else's home. There's an obligation to be polite and courteous that works alongside the obligation of the host to be hospitable. It's a miniature social contract made by those who enter into it, the guest and the host. And the fear of breaking that contract is the basis of the social horror cycle. Like, isn't this part of polite society that you don't just sort of get up and leave like a dinner party to which you received an invitation? You're seeing a bunch of people you haven't seen in a long time, and in some ways this reunion is sort of for you. Would you really just get up and leave? I mean, that's, that's a statement. That's a social transgression. And so part of what the movie is kind of exploring is um, the, the downfall of too much politeness. And though the hosts take actions that are a bit out of place and could be alarming, the guests feel obligated to downplay their suspicions in order to appear polite and grateful. The physical space of the home and the way that it's shot in these films helps convey the anxiety of the situation. The cold lighting makes 10 Cloverfield Lane's bunker seem especially uninviting, while the voyeuristic camera in the gift conveys the feeling of being spied on. The sound design in the invitation heightens domestic noises to the point of a traditional horror scare chord. <laughs> Cinematography is also used to make the spaces feel claustrophobic and confining, while the composition traps characters further in frames within the frame. Karin Kusama relates her use of the camera to the theme of suspicious politeness. I immediately thought a lot about organizing space in very composed frames, and I strove to trap the characters in certain visual arrangements. Thus, the feeling of being trapped in a space due to social conventions is translated visually, this is not the only way that these films make their audiences uncomfortable, though. 
Mannerisms and speech patterns also play a large part. Mark Duplass and Patrick Bryce, creators of Creep, say, We were very interested in how you meet people and don't quite understand what's up, but you start to get signs. For us, that was intense eye contact, lack of personal space, oversharing, maybe a little too much love here and there. I feel like we should just do this right now because at the end of the day, it's going to be normal, so we'll just... Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, that's not going to be anything weird at all. And that's another main theme that brings all of these films together under the social horror banner, the suspicion. The idea that something's not quite right, even though on the surface it seems like it is. Most horror films focus on when, social horror focuses on if. And when that if is confirmed later in these films, they tend to shift from primarily using the conventions of social horror to putting the conventions of their secondary genre at the forefront. While that's horror for The Invitation and Creep, for Ten Cloverfield Lane, it's science fiction. For Nightcrawler, it's a thriller. And for The Gift, it's a melodrama. These films are working through a lot thematically, but it can be difficult to pinpoint exactly what they're mediating because the cycle may not be complete. To help clarify what societal anxiety social horror is working through, I turn to an enduring aspect of the horror genre, the monster. The monster is often used as a metaphor for a particular fear or anxiety, but its main purpose in the narrative is to disrupt the status quo. If that's the case, then the if question that these films ask is based on the audience wondering who the monster is, the guest or the host. The answer in all of these films is ultimately the host, and I don't think that's a coincidence. The home is an extension of the host. Homeownership is the centerpiece of the American dream, and the home can be seen as a microcosm of society as a whole. These films do not imply that the home is evil in and of itself, but that its use as an oppressive institutional structure can simultaneously confine and exclude people, trapping them, literally and metaphorically, in its grasp. But the guests in these films are eventually forced to fight back in order to resist the confines of this institution and, in some cases, simply stay alive. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, we should go. No, no, we should no, go. no. Something very dangerous is going on here and nobody's talking about it. We're all just ignoring it because David brought out some good wine. As film theorist Paul Wells explains, these formations are the very structures which offer humanity a sense of purpose and order. Their collapse is an indication that they either exclude, cannot contain, or misrepresent forces which ultimately revisit and challenge them. And here's a good time to discuss Nightcrawler. It's a film dealing with the same issues, but from a different perspective. In Nightcrawler, the metaphorical monster succeeds. In fact, he's the protagonist of the film, Lou. Lou is looking for a career when he discovers nightcrawling, a job where people record footage of the police responding to accidents and crimes and sell them to news stations. Writer-director Dan Gilroy talks about the character's success story in the film. It was a vehicle to explore uh, somebody who succeeds for all the wrong reasons and how we live in a world that creates somebody like this and ultimately rewards them every step of the way. Lou has studied and absorbed the rules of the system and exploits them to become successful. He's basically the American dream on steroids, using others to get what he wants and propel himself closer to personal success. While the protagonists of the other films resist the system, Lou embraces it. I'm curious to see where the social horror cycle goes. There are a few more recent films that may show different ways social horror can be utilized. For example, Get Out was released in February. It's a film written and directed by Jordan Peele, and the plot description implies that the film will fall into the social horror cycle. Peele even refers to it as a social thriller. But there's a new element put at the forefront, race. Do they know I'm black? Should they? You might wanna, you know. While the films discussed before have social themes that they work through, they don't tackle issues like race, class, or gender in a direct way like Get Out seems to be aiming for. This could be the future direction of the social horror cycle, to discuss how different communities of people experience the social world and structures surrounding them. Films are one of the ways society mediates itself, working through what we are and what we long to be. And because horror films tend to be produced en masse and for lower budgets, they can reflect on these issues as they are faced by society. And social horror is no different. Because of this, social horror may become a more popular and pointed form of genre, using its form to both scare and critique the audiences and the world that they inhabit.